What's up guys, Yuxloth here and today we're taking a look at the new patch 3.19 Terror of the Night, release patch of Camazots. We're gonna do this from the top down to the bottom, so we're starting with the new guard and we're gonna talk about him quite a bit. We're gonna go, go quickly over the skins and achievements and then we're gonna talk balance, because that's my focus as usual. So we're beginning with Camazots. Camazots, the deadly god of bats, is the next god to be released into Smite. He will be coming out next Tuesday after this patch. Uh, PTS for that will be up on Friday, most likely. He will be an ability-based assassin, so more early game focused than anything, really. And uh, he will rely a lot on lifesteal, healing, ability damage throughout his kit. Um, not, yeah, well, a decent amount of mobility, but not crazy mobility, like, not Sir Cat levels of mobility, rather focused on damage. Not focused on hard CC at all. So, very, very interesting. We'll just go through his abilities now. Quick look at his first uh, image here. That's what he looks like. That's what his uh, icon, his, his card looks like. And now let's look at the abilities. So, passive is Essence Drinker, which means he gets 5% extra lifesteal and healing. And if... A guard dies. This is kind of a second passive. He gets that essence pool, which was already mentioned in the data mining, meaning there is a pool where the guard died, no matter if it's an ally or an enemy. And when Camazots stays in that pool, he gets healed, and these stay for quite a few minutes. No one but Camazots can see them. Multiple of them stack on top of each other, so you can get quite a lot of healing by staying in the area, but you have to stand in that pool. Also, there is an interaction with another ability when it comes to his passive. We get to that when we get to the ability. He also regenerates mana while in the pools, so he can basically heal up to full and just not back by staying in these pools. Out of combat, this heals faster, while in combat it still works. Then we have ability 1, Screech. The ability itself is a line ability, which deals up to 270 damage with 70% scaling. But the interesting thing here is that it's kind of a sound wave that then echoes back and bounces back like Ho Yi Ricochet, but three separate ones going in different directions, like two spreading to the side, one coming back directly straight at Kamazots. And when Kamazots is hit by the echo, he gains vision of the enemy guard that he hit uh, for the next 15 seconds and gains bonus physical power against them for the same duration. So 15 seconds is quite a lot and he gets up to 40 power of this. That's... A decent steroid, that's a, a full uh, tier 3 power item, or depending on what you're building, but uh, obviously a very, very potent buff that will allow you to... Um, I would say this is an ability you will use. I want to use early in the fight, even if it doesn't slow, just to get the vision and then um, also get the extra power for your other abilities on a 15 second cooldown. That's ability 1, plain and simple. Ability 2 is rather simple in its technique as well. It is a line ability as well and that line ability um, when hitting an enemy deals up to 420 damage <laughs> what a number and 130 percent scaling now this sounds like a high scary number but keep in mind that this is physical power so it is decent but you've got other gods like thor that actually have higher scalings on certain abilities it's just a decent amount of scaling for an ability based god um, it has a 30 percent slow and it then after a while, it's, it's, it's a bit of a dot, I think, and then the, the, the uh, bats that fly out with this ability fly back and heal Camazots. Now the interesting thing is, uh, when you do it on a jungle buff, then Camazots will get some kind of mark. And this mark is basically another part of his passive. It lasts for 210 seconds, and this uh, gets his passive up. It, it increases his vampirism, uh, increasing his lifesteal and healing further up to, um, what's the total? Well, it's just 3% per stack, so up to 9% plus the 5% base value that you have. That's pretty nice. Uh, mana costs also 80 as with the first ability and the third ability. They are all in the same price range there, scaling up. And the cooldown is just 10 seconds. So this is basically your bread and butter because you do um, that ability on the jungle buffs, obviously, in order to get your, your passive up and get more benefits from that. You get the, you use it on enemies to slow them down, but I still feel like if you are able to, you want to use the Screech first, just to get the extra damage for the Vampire Bats. You just have to watch out that the enemy doesn't go away. This is only his, like, th this is his only CC in his kit, which is very weird, weird for an assassin. It is just that slow, and that's that's it. So, not even a crazy slow. 30% slow is not, not insane by any means. So, less CC than even, even Nemesis. 
And then we have ability 3, Devour. Uh, Kamazots has a leap, that's Devour. It deals up to 320 base damage and 75% scaling. And heals for 55, up to 55 and 25% scaling. So the heal is not crazy, it's a little bit. And it's per enemy hit, so he can uh, heal from three different targets. Similar to the Kali leap, actually. Cooldown 15 seconds. And the leap has a, I think it was 40 units range, or 45 units range. So it's shorter than other leaps. And he cannot get over certain walls with it, which is kind of bad for him. And means you really have to be mindful of your positioning. And then you have the ultimate, a bat out of hell. Kamazots flies into the air, becoming CC immune for the next 3 seconds. While flying, he may swoop forward to deal damage. And that damage is 300 base damage and only 20% scaling, which uh, I find very, very odd, because it's a, a total of 60% scaling on an ability that doesn't have the craziest base damage. But, uh, well, you can use it 3 times. And um, it's, it looks really cool. You're flying up and you're just going down, going down, going down swooping down on the enemy every time. It can probably be used in escape pretty well uh, on top of that. And if you hit more than one guard, then the damage is increased. So that's why, how you really want to use it. Because um, for every guard, it's increased by 10% damage. So if you have CC set up, then you can increase it by 30% easily. I'm, I'm still surprised that the scaling is so low here compared to the uh, Vampire Bats where you get 130% scaling, especially since he's an, ab an ability-based character. I know it's a line ability, you know, but 20%, up to 60%, if you confirm all three, that's like rage and all levels to confirm, I would say. Um, eh, and you're out of position afterwards? You, yeah, okay. Um, we also got the recolor here, that's uh, this one. And that's it for Kamazot so far. My first impression is that he's not as unique as I was hoping for, he's not as uh, st standing out as much, he's very much like plain. Leap to line abilities and um, a special ult of some sorts that aerial, like many other assassins. Lacks a bit of hard CC. It makes up for it with a lot of lifesteal, so stain. Question is, is that going to be good enough? I feel like he can be very strong if that lifesteal goes uh, overboard, so to speak. If that, if that uh, takes takes over the guard as a whole. But if the lifesteal doesn't uh, live up to the expectation, then his kit seems a little weaker than other assassins, actually. But... Once again, we have to test this, we have to feel how this heals in game. I think his abilities are really quick as well and stuff like that, so that helps. Um, so, more on him after the uh, PTS is actually up and I can play. Now for skins. We have a bunch of skins this patch and they have some really cool designs for this patch, so let's go. We've got Agni, Agni Gemini. Uh, much cooler than I thought he would be. Looks really cool, has really nice animations in game, really cool skin. If I would play Agni more, I would play this skin now. Neath Skull of Dangerfield, same thing here. Really cool skin, really cool weapon. I think it looks a little different than this in-game. Really cool old animation, all that stuff. Uh, really like that skin. Then, the one that's uh, unfortunately glitched on the patch notes. My favorite skin this patch, Isis Celestial. I did not expect half as much from this skin as we got. This skin is actually amazing. I, I love this skin and I, I love the animations on the wings. They're like uh, church window glass, basically, saint glass, is that what it's called? And they reflect with every move, with every animation she has, they reflect. And they look fucking gorgeous. And I want this skin in my life, and I'm gonna play Isis just because of the skin. The only thing that I don't like about the skin is the hair in the actual model. Everything else about the skin is amazing. Izanami Plague Bearer. Uh, I like the skin a lot, think it looks really cool in game. Only thing it lacks a bit, a little bit are uh, custom animations. Fenrir Wolfman, not my favorite. It's a nice skin. A Willish, also not what I was hoping for. It's a decent skin in game, has some nice animations. Has a nice advantage with the ultimate because the indicator is much better to see. Um, nice orange style. Not bad. I like the in game model better than the skin card actually, but I was expecting more. Gold and master other masteries for Neat. Pretty cool. Look kind of cool in game. Izanami masteries. Um, I don't like them that much. I think Black Bearer is a lot better, but oh well. Voice packs real quick. If we're getting them, Gemini Agni does not have one. Okay, apparently the voice packs are not here yet. That's really unfortunate. We might just hear all of them at once. How oh well. Agni gets a dance. Sean Kui gets his achievements. Kali gets her achievements. Kabraken gets his achievements. Naja gets his achievements. Obviously, the whole content for the Odyssey is added. Halloween Arena is coming and it's. Got a new scary potion last year with the jump scare. Let's see what we get this year. 
different effect. Um, fix for uh, people that the players that were dead not having their screen turn gray on low resolution. That was kind of weird sometimes. And a fix for the recall skin that doesn't really matter. And now we go for the item changes. And the item changes are, are uh, interesting this patch. Number one, Gem of Isolation gets a power increase from 70 to 90. So mages buy it more. Price of the item is 2,700. Um, Chronos Pendant has 2,400 to its name and also is a uh, not much bought item at the moment, but it has 75 power. And I think that's the best item to compare it to because other items in Mages Kits usually have additional benefits like penetration or the, the extra power on the rod, um, and it's kind of hard to compare to them. But I think that value really ups the overall um, viability of Gem of Isolation. I think we're going to see this more. I think this is a buff to Poseidon as well. Uh, I think we're going to see this on some mages where we didn't see it before. Obviously, the price tag is still high, and that's still a problem over, over other magical items, but giving it some more power uh, does justify picking it a lot more. Um, I don't like seeing Gem of Isolation in the meta personally because I don't like slows on items. I don't like Frostbound either. Just got to live with it, I guess. But yeah, I think in the end, uh, this is going to get the item a little more on the field of consideration for, for picks, for late game picks, for example, as well. Question is always which major, major you're going to build it on because most mages uh, kind of want, want to burst. I just got the question here if uh, if Wingblade is, is going to be more viable now. I think Wingblade was always viable and in this context it will still be viable. The problem is that Gem of Isolation and Frostbound can prog much more than Winged Blade can. So, yeah. You just need to make use of it when it procs. Ritual Dagger gets a change, mostly a buff, I would say. Uh, price decrease from 2000 to 1850, so 150 price drop, in uh, return for decrease of the, the attack speed on the item from 20% to 10%, making it more of a utility item or for, or for supports who don't really benefit from that attack speed all that much, stuff like that. Is it going to be picked up more? Um, when it came out, I thought this was a crazy good item and still has crazy good stats. The problem is that there's rarely ever room for it in a build. It doesn't have the same passive as Winged Blade would. Uh, you can sometimes fit it in, in in certain scenarios, but you, just, you really have to consider which relics you want across the game when getting Dagger, or you have to consider if you want to get Dagger the moment you get out of base and buy your first Relic, and that's kind of annoying, because if you buy Met, you already lose some benefit out of this, and, and Met is a great uh, Relic choice for support, so it's a bit of an awkward one, but I can see the price decrease maybe helping it a little bit. I don't think it's going to be picked up like insanely much compared to before. Unforged Hammer. Unforged Hammer is a really terribly awkward item for, I think, the whole season now. <laughs> It has not found its place, and that's why we're seeing yet another change. Coast reduced from 2,400 to 2,000. Physical power decreased from 40 to 30. And aura increased from 10% to 50%. So they said that the aura increase and the, 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 the physical power decrease even each other out, but they don't really because the power increases for your whole team against the target. So I think this is actually pretty decent now. The price tag is not very high. And I think it's it's going to be possible to fit that into builds. And it could be really scary because it's like a constant armor effect. The question is, um, who do you build it on? Nemesis, maybe. But Nemesis usually builds more egoistical. Chalk, maybe. But then again, when are you going to see a Chalk? So you basically need to combi combine this with, um, with Frostbound for it to be really effective and... I see some guys, maybe Raven could actually make a lot, a lot of use of this now, but uh, overall it's still a bit of an awkward item and it, I would just like to see the passive change, but I think it's going to get picked up more uh, now that it's actually, for the first time in the season, uh, something that I would say is justifiable in terms of buying it. Tower Shield. Tower Shield just um, gets a protection increase by 10. Big deal. Oh, that's fine. It's okay. Nothing major. God changes, though. Chuck. Chuck is receiving a mixture of quality of life adjustment fixes and changes to how his ability work. Yes, but... So the first one is good. Torrent gets um, the potential to be used while crippled. Before you couldn't because it's also dash, but now he doesn't dash when you use it while crippled. He just deals the damage in place. Really good. 
basically like uh, Thor hammer, you throw out the hammer, but you can't teleport to it, right? Because you're crippled. So I like that. The awkward one here is Stormcall. Oh, so what's the other part here? Sorry. Adjusted the tech of this ability to allow it to always hit enemies who are in the range of the spin. That's also good because it had, like, someone in Reddit posted this actually. It had this awkward thing where you would use it and then it would basically not hit the enemy because he would walk out before. And I guess that's what, what's meant here. So that's cool. So that's more confirmed damage. But now, now for, for, for Stone Call. Like, what the hell? Remove the conditional bonus damage and knock up, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, when picking up the axe on activation. Stormcall no longer interacts with a deployed axe. What? Base damage increased from up to 400 to up to 450. So 50 extra base damage, keep that in mind. Physical power scaling increased from 100 to 120. The thing is, Chuck's ultimate when you before activated while having the axe, would give you 150 extra damage, so it will deal 550, so you're losing 100 damage, and it would still give you the extra 20% scaling. So it would give you exactly the same scaling and more base damage, as long as you had the axe down, and it would give you a knockup. You have none of that now. And that means Chuck has even less hard CC, because the only hard CC in his kit is now... A, wait, hang on. Is a silence a hard CC? I think it's... maybe. That's one of the few I'm not sure about. I think it is. I think it is. I, I think because this arm is one, it should be hard CC as well. So he has a silence and a slow. No more knockup. Knockup was a great setup. Don't know why they took that away. They could have made it so that it always activates and we would have all of a sudden seen Shark being played. If it was not conditional, that would have made sense. Taking knockup away. It's more of a nerf than a buff. So, yeah. Don't know what that was. <laughs> Medusa gets mana cost decrease on Acid Spray and Lacerate. So she's a bit more of a boldy early, not uh, dependent on Transcendence. More of a death toll hunter than maybe and stuff like that. Good. Doesn't make her more viable. Nah, she's still like ability based in a meta where you have better abilities based hunters. Uh, she's a mid, mid mid hunter basically. Like, yeah. Like, uh, Yaman. It's a Yaman hunter. <laughs> Wait. Is that, is that even right? Whatever. Uh, doesn't doesn't change much about the character, I think. Scylla, though. Scylla, what the... What the... What the... <laughs> Why? So apparently Scylla was underperforming in early game. What do we get? Uh, Scylla can now deploy a Sentinel while crippled, but she cannot dash to it. Same as Chuck. Good. That's a quality of life I can get behind. Uh, even though it's a buff, because she can escape better when under cripples. And the other thing is the Aqua one. Crush increases mana cost by 10. Okay. Increase base damage, starting from rank 2 by 5, and then up to, like, with each rank, she gets 5 more base damage on this ability. Now, A, this is not an early game increase by, like, default, because the base damage on the first rank is still the same. It's more of a late game, extra 20 damage. Um, but it's still an early game, because you're going to max the crush first, and around level 5, level... Level 7, all that stuff. Where you, you When you put points into it, you know, it's getting better. Depending on if you skip, obviously, with level 5. But, um, yeah, it's, it's getting better with the higher ranks. But, the other thing I do not understand. Increased magical power scaling from 8% to 100%. Does Scylla really look like a god that needs more scaling? Scylla, who's got more scaling on her 1, on her root recently, as far as I recall. She's got more scaling on her crush now, and she's got a high scaling ultimate, and she's got an escape. Scylla, Scylla is a late game god, and that's what she should be like, and when, for a very particular reason, gods like Artemis do not get buffs to perform better in early game, as they are supposed to be late game gods, then why would Scylla who has an escape and can therefore play a lot safer early, get a buff to her early game when she's a late game god. What is this weird ass double standard? Now, I'm not the one who's saying that Artemis needs a buff, but I'm the, the one saying that Scylla doesn't. Uh, case closed. I see, I see how she was underperforming after the potions were removed, but that's because she was absolutely overperforming when the potions were in the game and she had sold them at the same time. And now we're getting close to that again, only that she doesn't need to buy extra shit for that. Like, obviously it's not the same, but it's just no logic, man. It's no logic. Why give her earlier wave clear? Why? 
Susano. Susano gets nerfs. Had it coming. No surprise. Interesting ones, though. So, the weird thing, or like the one that you can't, you can talk about, but you can't really, you can't really uh, tell how it's gonna feel un until you're in game. That's the one. That's the Stormcutter. So Stormcutter gets a pre pre cast time increase for the first slash from 0.1 seconds to 0.4 seconds. 0.4 seconds is not crazy long, but it is a delay, and I think it's gonna affect his AA canceling as well, right? It's not like Hunbats too, I think, but it's it's still a noticeable difference, I think, from ba basically instant to slight delay. Now, the damage on the first and second attack uh, gets decreased significantly. Um, this is actually a, a pretty huge amount, in my opinion, um, as it is 35 base damage at max rank. That's that's a lot. But, at the same time, the third attack of Stormcutter now deals 80 da damage. The dash now deals damage. So what does this do? This gives you uh, 10 more base damage in total, but the dash, keep that in mind, that the 2 is a big AoE swing, and the dash is just on a single target most of the time. It's a line ability. You're not going to hit more than 2 people with that unless they're really mispositioned, and even 2 is unlikely. So, in the end, uh, the damage is just redistributed, meaning that a, more, a bigger chunk of the damage is onto a single target, and also a bigger chunk of the damage forces him to stay in. You have to, before you can just, you know, use your both first swings and then dash out. Now you have to stay in to get the full damage on thir thwi thir thwing. third swing. So that's uh, a nerf. And an interesting change, an interesting approach. Especially in, in combination with a higher precast time. And then uh, the scalings are also changed. You got, like, now get 33% scaling on the third dash. And the other scalings, which were 80 previously, are reduced to 65 so he gets an extra 3% scaling at all, which is nothing. So overall, 10 more base damage, 3% more scaling, a lot more situational as he cannot use his escape to deal damage unless the enemy is positioned in such a way. Um, will not allow him to just, you know, stupid poke and then dash out. Typhoon, also getting a nerf. And this is huge. Now only applies knockup effect when fully charged. I always found it kind of awkward that uh, there was no, no uh, really, no real benefit to charging it. Like, you could just drop it and you just hammer it into the enemy team, and you would usually hit one or two people easy. Um, now there's a reason to charge it. Without the knockup, uh, the ability is significantly weaker, especially when you consider that most other uh, assassins have instant CC of some sort, like Thor ult, boom, Susano, uh, Hunbat's ult, boom. Like that's just Red Tusker knockup. That's just dropped. Like, yes, you sometimes have wind-up for it, but it's a different condition because you can get in from somewhere. With the Typhoon, you need to set up a lot. Like, you need to play it a lot smarter now. So, those are significant nerfs, in my opinion. I think that makes um, a relevant change to who he is, what he does, how he plays. I think this may be the point where we'll see Susano drop in the meta. Because it does feel very different to play him now, I'm pretty sure. Uh, it's nice that the third the dash doesn't go to waste anymore if you if you use it on minion camps now and stuff, but he is a lot more reliant on strategic planning. You can't just drop his shit and deal damage, and that makes it a very different character, I think. Those are the patch notes. Oddly enough, we are not seeing any changes to Freya, which were announced. I don't know what happened there. Maybe they decided that she doesn't need nerfs after all. Maybe they'll wait for next patch. Maybe they just forgot about them and they're coming in the second second uh, PTS phase. Who knows? But um, overall, interesting patch. A lot of nice skins. Uh, some awkward changes to guards, in my opinion, or to items. Um, some interesting ones as well. And we also have a new guard, which I really like because it's an assassin. I don't know how to feel about him yet, and I will have to play him first. With that, that's the end of the patch notes. Thank you guys for watching. Duke Sloth, out.